Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for today's Tech Forum session. I'm Maria Zupardi, the Marketing Coordinator and Community Manager here at Dundurn Press, where I help facilitate and create content for all of our social media channels. Um, and I'm so happy to welcome you all to the Art of Promoting Books on Social Media, the Publisher's Perspective. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today, an acknowledgement that is deeply personal due to this virtual platform and the wide range of locations people are joining from today. Today, I am broadcasting from the traditional territories of the original nations of this land, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabek, uh, Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat Indigenous peoples. I encourage you to visit the nativeland.ca website to learn more about the peoples whose land you are joining from today. The Tech Forum team and BookNet Canada endorse the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada and supports an ongoing shift from gatekeeping to space making in the book industry. In spirit of that acknowledgement, we confirm BookNet's responsibility in mending the sacred hoop with Canada's Indigenous peoples to be an ally to all Black, Indigenous, and people of color, and to unite and work alongside one another. If you are having difficulties with Zoom or have any tech-related questions, please put your questions in the chat, or you can email techforum at booknetcanada.ca. We're providing live ASL interpretation and closed captioning for this presentation. To see the captions, please find the live transcript button in the Zoom menu at the bottom of your screen, click on it and choose show subtitle. If during the presentation you have questions for the speakers, please use the Q&A panel in the bottom menu. And lastly, we'd like to remind attendees of the code of conduct, please do be kind, be inclusive, be respectful of others, including of their privacy, and be aware of your words and actions. And please report any violations to Tech Forum at booknetcanada.ca. Do not harass speakers, hosts, or attendees or record these sessions. We have a zero tolerance policy, and you can find the entire code of conduct at techforum.booknetcanada.ca slash code of conduct. And I'm very excited to introduce our speakers to all of you. Um, Kaya Smith Blackburn currently works at Drawn and Quarterly as a marketing assistant. She also has experience working for Black Rose Books, Linda Leaf Publishing, Metatron Press and The Secret Mountain. And next up, we have Kate Patrick, who is the social media and communications specialist at Orca Book Publishers located in Victoria, BC. Before Orca, she worked in the marketing department at Kids Can Press in Toronto, Ontario. Kate has a BA in communications and political science from Simon Fraser University and an MSc in publishing from Edinburgh Napier University. And in her free time, she enjoys running, traveling, and spending time with her mischievous puppy, Poppy. And next up, we have Sam Devota, as the, who is the Senior Associate Marketing and Publicity at Tundra Book, Penguin Random House Canada. She has a publishing certificate from Toronto Metropolitan University, formerly Ryerson, and she can most often be found behind the scenes on the Penguin Teen Canada social media accounts. Outside of work, Sam spends a lot of time talking about YA books and pop punk bands, um, sometimes at the same time also. And last but certainly not least, we have Curtis Samuel, who is a colonial settler of Welsh and Irish descent, currently living on the traditional territories of the Lekungwin peoples. He is the publicist and social media coordinator at Touchwood Editions and has previously worked at Penguin Random House Canada and House of Anansi Press. So thank you everyone for being here today. I have a whole whack load of questions to ask you about all things social media. Um, so let's get right into it. My first question I've been dying to know the answer to is, can you share with us briefly what a day as a social media manager at a publishing house looks like? Um, and why don't we start with you, Curtis? Great, yeah. Um... So glad to have this discussion. Marie and I were just on a smaller internal panel, so lots to chat about social media happening right now. I'll stick to the brief part. I'm a publicist and a social media coordinator, so that means my day to day. I'm also pursuing, uh, you know, your traditional media channels, so 
print, magazines, newspaper, online, any websites that's promoting books. Um, and then I'm also focusing on the social media side. So connecting with community members, making sure authors are set up on social. Um, so a day-to-day -day activity is lots of email pitching. And when I don't feel like I can focus that attention on the more, you know, pitching side of things, I can create some content, have a little bit more fun. Um, so yeah, day to day, I would say I'm spending more time on social media now that I have to connect with more people. So like 40% social media, 60% traditional publishing publicity stuff. Awesome. Yeah, it's so great to be able to break up your work day and have some time for fun stuff. Um, Sam, what about you? What's a day in the life of your job like? Yeah, I'm very much in the same boat as Curtis, where um, because I'm the senior associate of marketing and publicity, a good part of my day is spent, you know, all that same kind of fun stuff, the pitching, um, working a little bit on advertising now too, that kind of stuff, uh, which is great. And I love it. But I do also love spending time on social media, just connecting with our readers and our followers. Um, it's hard to tell sort of what the day to day look like looks like it kind of depends on the day and what's going on if maybe there's a new book release um i might be spending a lot more time uh on the internet than i would normally um and then the in between is a lot of pitching and following up so many emails and tweets to answer throughout Absolutely. the day <laughs> um kaya what about you um, yeah, thanks for asking. Happy to be here. Um, I'm a drawing quarterly we published comics in Montreal. Um, so yeah, so I am the marketing assistant at drawing quarterly. So I, I focused um, my preparation on mostly social media and I can talk about social media. But yeah, I do lots of pitching, pitching to like traditional press, and, you know, blogs and anything that anything that would feature uh, drawing quarterly's material. Um, but yeah, every day I begin by looking at how well the social media did from the day before um, and just seeing like what worked and what didn't. Um, these days we have a lot of tours going on. So Kate Beaton is on tour right now as well as Tom Gall and Nick Dernasso. So I have to do a lot of social media for those two. Tours. Um, so like daily posts, stories, Facebook stuff. Um, uh, usually if there are events happening, we do a lot of scheduling. So a lot of like um, doing stuff on Hootsuite and TweetDeck, like preparing all the social media so that it matches up with the tours. Um, and then uh, once the event stuff is done, I look and see what books are coming out in the next week or two. And I just like to do reels or individual posts about those books. For instance, I did posts about to show up books today um, by Shakira Muziki Richards coming out next week. So I do those kinds of um, posts about books coming out. And then, uh, yeah, we just started experimenting with reels that are super fun. You can sync them up with music. So we like doing those on pub days or um, if a book is coming out the next day. Um, and then if we have a newsletter, I do a lot of the social media for the newsletter um, in, in real form and on stories and on Twitter. Um, and then most of the rest of the day, like in terms of a social media focus is retweeting anytime we get a mention, um, making sure that all of our press gets put out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram stories. And, uh, and then if it is a pub day, then you do a bunch of social media specifically for that book. That's kind of the situation. So it's, yeah, social media is like, Social media coordination is probably like 50% of my day or 40% and the other is like traditional media stuff. Yeah. I love it. If only our entire days could be filled with social media. <laughs> There's a lot of dopamine with social media. <laughs> exactly. Um, what about you, Kate? What does a day as a social media manager look like for you? Um, so I always start my day with checking our social channels just to see what's come in, uh, any mentions, getting back to any messages as soon as I can early in the morning, just to do that first kind of rundown, uh, make sure there's uh, that everything's under control. Um, I also do communications for Orca, so that includes um, creating blog posts, press releases, other uh, marketing materials that might go out, as well as um, providing input on covers and cover copy and, and things like that. So like everyone else here, it seems like my time is also a bit divided um, between social media and all the other marketing stuff. Um, but yeah, I usually check back in social media throughout the day. 
Um, I try not to be on there all the time because I find that it is a bit of a, a attention span grabber. <laughs> um, so I'll check in a few times a day and then um, a good portion of my day is um, creating posts um, and scheduling them for the future. I use Hootsuite to do that um, just to get ahead of the game as much as possible. We all know that things pop up every day that need to be posted as soon as possible. So um, I always leave a little bit of room for that as well. Um, but I try to work ahead as much as possible to minimize uh, any kind of stress <laughs> that could be involved there. Awesome. Yeah, Hootsuite is so amazing to use. Like I love using it and checking it probably more often than I should in a day. Um, <laughs> that was great to know about what um, your days kind of look like. It basically sounds the same as mine. So we're all pretty much trucking along with social media. Um, so my next question is what's unique about promoting books on social media compared to any other product or brand? Um, and I'd love to start with you first, Sam. Sure. Um, I was trying to think of a good answer to this yesterday. And I feel like it's going to sound silly, but the fact that we're promoting books, which is something that you're supposed to spend time with, but you're doing it in, you know, an image or 30 seconds or something like that feels very hard sometimes, you know, how do you tell people exactly what they're going to feel by reading this book or, um, you know, the top five reasons they should read it over all the other books that are out there or over spending time on TV or watching TV or something like that. Um, and it's also, you know, I, I love looking at the posts where people include so many different um like props and things like that. And I feel like as publishers, we kind of have to stay away from that a little bit. You don't want to look like you're endorsing something else or, you know, product placement and things like that are, are always an issue. Um, so as much as I'd love to do posts where I have, you know, a line of Funko Pops in the background or something like that, sometimes you have to pull back from it. You don't want to look like you're, you're pushing a different product than what you are doing. So that can be a little bit tricky, I find. Um, but I mean, overall, the the book community is just so excited about books so you know once you get one person to talk about it then you're you're kind of good to go and you could just say all sorts of things about this book and people will jump on it I especially love you know um twitter threads and things like that where you can I one thing that I love to do is um I compare I try to pair books with music um so I try to do that at least once a month and sometimes it's totally self-indulgent it's just a band that I love but sometimes it's um someone who's actually relevant so like when Harry Styles was in town it was you know if you like this Harry Styles song you should read this book that kind of thing so I love being able to do weird little um campaigns like that every so often yeah those fun um very authentic posts are always, I think, the best part of all of our jobs. Um, Kaya, what about you? Um, yeah, so as I said, I work for Drawn and Quarterly, which is a, a comic book publisher, a graphic novel publisher. So ours are like a, it's a very specific visual medium. Um, and so, you know, social media does really well in the form of Instagram, uh, like in the form of slides. We like to take perhaps a six panel page and divide it up into six slides. Um, and then the seventh slide will be like my hand holding the book and maybe the eighth slide will be maybe a poster for a tour or something. So it, you know, with people just like looking and flipping through, they really enjoy sort of being told a story with these very simple images. Um, so that's one way that uh, like, book promoting on social media is very unique than any other brand um, or any other product. Um, I also find that uh, there's quite a bit of community on Instagram and Twitter for authors and for publishers. Um, I find that if we pitch books to grammars, they're very likely to review the book and then share it with their book clubs and their followers. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, I think the bookstagram, bookstagram world is very healthy and there's a lot of fun to be had on those platforms with graphic novels in particular. Yeah. As a bookstagrammer myself, I do, like I love um, just all the graphic novel content that I see up on my feed. So yeah, that's an awesome answer, Kaya. Um, Kate, let's go to you next. Yeah, so kind of similar to what Sam and Kaya mentioned, um, you know, we're very lucky to work with such a fantastic range of products. Um, I find especially with children's books, um, picture books particularly, we have an enormous wealth of material to work with that make posting on social media pretty easy. Like we already have these 
incredible professional illustrators that are just amazing. Um, and we essentially just get to showcase their art and really showcase um, the text in our stories. Um, so I think unlike a lot of other products, um, we're really, really lucky in that sense that we can really share these very beautiful products. Um, and I agreed with uh, Kaya Instagram, especially um, as it's such a visual platform really gives us a boost. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's really, really fun to be able to do that. And like the others mentioned, um, the Bookstagram community is so wonderful and kind and supportive. And it's, you know, it makes it um, a, a, lot, a lot of fun just to see um, how passionate people will be about some of our books when they're reviewing. It's just like such a feel good moment. <laughs> um, and I hope that our authors and our illustrators really get that too, because um, as they should, it's so well deserved. So, yeah. Yeah, nice. I mean, yeah, it's totally a win when you can find that reviewer who like will be behind your book 100%. Um, Curtis, you have a ton of visual uh, like books at Touchwood. So I'm eager to hear your answer to what everyone else has said so far. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for those of you who aren't familiar with Touchwood, we do um, a number of cookbooks and we also do gardening books. So a lot of lifestyle, uh, visually appealing, as Maria was saying. Um, so it's interesting when I try and think of our audience at Touchwood because it's a lot of lifestyle with a smattering of literature because we do um, we do publish fiction, literary nonfiction as well. So it's like, it's a very broad range of users on our account. So really when I'm trying to pitch a book that's more literature, I'm trying to start that like bookstagram conversation. So I think I was mentioning this a little bit to you, Maria, um, last week where it's like, I'm trying to showcase the product without being like, this is a product. I'm trying to create like, a conversation or a space to be able to talk about books without just always saying like this book is for sale like buy this book um which I feel like I was definitely doing a lot of in the beginning I'm um, just like holding up a book and saying it's for sale but now I'm really trying to you know drive a conversation so like less so about this book and more so maybe about what the author was like doing that was fun on the weekend and that kind of creates uh like an anecdote for people to chat about rather than this like heady literary strong book like when we use a lot of marketing talk i don't feel like that translates really well into community social media um so what i'm trying to do is just like fun things that people can interact so we do cookbooks a lot so I can share. Um, I've been trying to do, but it's consumes a lot of time, but I'm trying to make like my own listicles from like our recipes. So like five fall recipes to try, um, but it is just again, we're a very small operation. So trying to get those things at the door. And so I'm posting that to Instagram, but I'm pushing to our website. Um, so there's, yeah. I'm definitely posting a lot of uh, still images of recipes. Again, we're a small team, so I'm trying to make some of those recipes uh, with reels, but that is if time allows it. I think there's one online right now, check it out. Um, but yeah, I think things where it's not like, go and buy this product. It's like, make this recipe, um, talk to somebody about this really great quote that you saw. And again, like with our gardening books, like what should you be doing in the garden right now? Like here's some tips you can do. Oh, also we have these gardening books. So it's like almost an aside that if you come for our content, eventually you'll realize that we also do sell books. Yeah, that's a great answer and just kind of reiterates that it's about creating a story and um, just trying to find the audience, but also using your own voice in a way that's unique to the product, which I think is what makes book marketing so much fun on social media. Um, so my next question, how much time do you all devote to creating content? Is it just you or do you guys like all have a team behind you or something? Um, Kate, why don't you get us started? 
Sure. Um, so it is primarily me, um, any kind of photography that's done of our books for Instagram or for anything else is me. Um, the majority of our TikTok content uh, comes from me and it often features my dog. Um, but beyond that, um, I am Canva's number one biggest fan. If anyone's not familiar, it is basically just a way that you can design any kind of social media asset or anything, literally anything. Um, and they just make it really, really easy. Um, so I'll do that for um, a lot of our posts as well when posting reviews and things like that. Um, I also have some help in that department. Another member of our marketing team also contributes because it is, it, it is pretty time consuming. Um, and we also occasionally reuse some of our ads um, as social media posts. So sometimes our designers will kind of rework them just to fit um, the right size uh, for social media. The amount of time <laughs> is kind of hard to pin down. Um, some days it can be hours. Some days it can be not as much if I've worked really far in advance or if, I, if I'm really um, kind of ahead of the game. It, it really does just depend uh, on the day. And usually if I have a little bit more free time during the day is when I'll kind of experiment with stuff that's a little bit more fun, um, like TikToks and Reels and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's, I think, me. Awesome. Um, Kaya, let's go to you next. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I made a note that I spend two hours a day doing social media, but I really think it's like three hours. Um, it could be three hours. I don't know. But that's creating content and disseminating it and like editing the posts and stuff. Then there's also social media planning. So, you know, making sure that all the tours are taken care of with the tweets and tweet deck and making sure that Hootsuite has the Instagram post scheduled and using meta publishing suite for published for doing Instagram stories beforehand and Facebook posts beforehand. Meta just started, I, I, maybe they've done this for a while, but I just realized that you can now schedule stories, which is really amazing. Um, it's 90% me doing the social media at Drawn and Quarterly, um, but our managing editor helps with big ideas and uh, planning. And also our marketing director helps with planning and content creation as well. Once in a while, someone else will swoop in and do a post that I didn't know was coming. And it's always fun to see. Uh, perhaps it's like the senior editor showing a photo from her trip to Korea to meet a comic artist. Um, or sometimes our production assistants at Drawn and Quarterly will show F and G's or advances of books when they come to their house to be vetted. So they'll just take a photo and they'll put that on. Usually they check with me just so that they, they, it doesn't intersect with a post I have coming up. Um, and, uh, and then also when our authors are on tour, sometimes they're accompanied by a staffer and they will take photos of the tour and post those. So yeah, all in all, I would say social media planning, content creation, and editing is about two and a half to three hours a day for me. And I would say that I am 90% in control of the social media, but we all kind of take turns once in a while to have a different voice, you know, different spice in there. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say it's nice to see a different voice once in a while. It is. It is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And also same. my hand gets a bit boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always the same position or same yeah. uh, size yeah. of the frame. Yeah, it's always yeah. nice to have a different hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam, let's go to you next. Um, so we actually just hired a social media coordinator, um, shout out to Julia. Otherwise, before that, it was just me on the Penguin Teen Canada accounts, um, and my boss, Sylvia, was on the Tundra Books accounts. Um, so I think I would say like two, three hours a day probably makes the most sense. I mean, there were some days where it was just, I barely looked at social media. I just didn't have time, whether it was too many meetings or if an author was in town or something like that. Um, it was just harder to check in as often as I'd like to. Um, but in terms of content, it was probably about two hours a day, I would think, um, on average. Uh, but now that we have a social media coordinator, she's really taking on a lot for me. Um, I don't like doing video. I struggle with it so much. It's not my strong suit. I, it's just, it's not a good thing when I try and do video. Um, so I'm really glad that we have a social media coordinator now who is really good at video, knows what she's doing, um, can pull all the books, all the jump on all those memes and all those trending things that I just could not focus on um, in my day-to-day -day life. So that's really great. And I mean, it takes up a, a huge amount of her day too now, but 
yeah, it's um it's a transitional period for us right now. So I'm sort of waffling back and forth between how much I'm actually touching uh, our accounts, but it's still I still like being a part of them because like we were saying earlier, there's that community aspect that I just love so much. Um, I don't want to totally let it go. And there's still, you know, things that come up every now and then that I think make sense for me to do versus um, our social media coordinator. But yeah, I will be spending less time on social media in the next few months, I think. You definitely deserve a break from everything you've been doing so far, Sam. <laughs> uh, Curtis, you're next. I'd love to hear your answer. Um, so I handle 100% of it. Um, we are a team of three. So there's the publisher, there's myself doing marketing and publicity, and then we have an editorial coordinator. Um, so that doesn't leave a ton of room for other people to jump in. But if any of them are on the call, we did chat about a plan going forward that we all have the opportunity to tweet something, have those voices out there, like really, I think, especially right now with social media, it's become like who your brand is as like the people who actually work there. So <clears throat> again, like what Kaya was saying, like, I'm tired of seeing my own hand in the photos. Like I want other people to join us. I know it's not their job. So it usually like I can sneak them into a photo or a video. Um, I'm trying to do some like behind the scenes, which is really just like us getting tacos. Like it's, you know, nothing really in the office. Um, but yeah, so day to day, hard to pin down. Um, I would say, especially because I'm active in my own social media, I kind of like keep my ear to the ground with what's going on. Like what Sam was saying, like memes, like how do you keep up with this just like constant flow of information and culture and so let's say two hours a day spread throughout the day really depending on what I'm being pulled into with my other roles at the company um and then yeah I do design most of our marketing materials that you see online we do work with a freelancer but again it's just uh, limited resources so anything you see that's like video posts like that's definitely all me Awesome. And video content is a much longer process, I think, than photos. So yeah, I can, I feel your pain, Curtis. Um, so my next question, what is the platform where your audience is more engaged and what has contributed to the success? Um, let's start with you, Kaya. Uh, yeah, so with Drawn and Quarterly, I would say that Twitter and Instagram are our most popular platforms. Twitter has a lot of consistent engagement as our authors are quite active there and literary communities tend to thrive on Twitter being a word-based medium. Um, it's also a good place to share new press and generate hype about a book. Um, so that's sort of our first big thing you wanna do. It's, Twitter is very immediate. It's more immediate than Instagram can be. Instagram is a little bit more of a time co uh, commitment, uh, both for the content creator and for the user. Uh, but Twitter is very immediate. Um, so if something happens, if our book gets in the Guardian of the New York Times, we, we, we're going to retweet it and we're going to post about it on Twitter. Um, if our author is, is, you know, just been nominated for a award, we're going to retweet it and get it on our Twitter. That's the most immediate thing. But it's not the most elegant and it's not the most like efficient way to tell a story. So our second most um, used and uh, facilitated social media platform is Instagram. And um, it contributes a great deal to our social media reach in general. Um, especially interior sequences, as I said before, people love those, um, but also previews of advances, advanced material, and reels that showcase new books or books that are coming out uh, very soon. Um, contributing to our success are a couple things. Number one, posting interiors, that's a big one. Uh, another one is posting about books very early in their life, about three months before a book is slated to come out. If you can show in advance or show, um, you know, like flip through the book in a reel or something, gets people excited very early on. Um, sharing behind the scenes pictures is really successful on our social media, both on, face all on Facebook, Twitter, 
and Instagram. Uh, but yeah, showing early advances or showing, um, you know, original art, drawings, or even like a, a photo. Sometimes it's hard to take a photo of a Mac, but like a photo of an InDesign file, you know. Um, and then also things that help us is being really honest and funny in copy um, for Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. I know that AOC talks about this. She's like, just be yourself in your copy. I can't be as cool as AOC, but um, I try to be as natural as possible. Um, and uh, another thing that really helps is posting on social media in like in the morning from 9.30 until about two o'clock, that's your golden zone. And I think it's something like Tuesday to Thursday are the best days because most people use social media at work. Like it's how they distract themselves from their work. So <laughs> that's when you want to catch them. Um, other things that help are posting regularly every day, posting on Twitter regularly. Um, and also it's good to just remember that platforms favor consistent active use. So if you're using the platform a lot, it will show your content in other people's feeds more likely, like more, more regularly. So um, you just want to show the algorithms that you are there. And uh, the last thing is for Instagram, we try to make sure every image is shot in the day um, and it's shot near the light source, if not outside in general, and that it's totally symmetrical and square. These things really um, entice human eyes. So <laughs> we try to keep them nice and clean. Yeah, those are my points. <laughs> it's always about beating the algorithm, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Curtis, let's go to you next. Um, could you remind me of the question? <laughs> Absolutely. So what is the platform where your audience is more engaged and what has contributed yeah. to the success? Yeah, so I um, joined Touchwood about a year and a bit ago. So social media has been a learning curve for me as well. I come from the publicity side of, of publishing. Um, so I'm still doing a lot of learning myself, what's sticking, um, trying to grow our audience. We're quite small right now. I think we're around 2000 followers across all platforms. So we really are just like trying to, to make a name for ourselves. Um, and so I have found Twitter, like Kaya was saying, to be a really great platform. I think it, um, you get a lot of bang for your buck, like exactly, like we don't have to focus as much on, um, like the beauty of it, like we obviously still want it to look professional and great, but I find that marketing materials can be a lot more present on Twitter, like posting a quick blurb with a 3D book cover can get a lot more attention on Twitter. Whereas like I tried doing that on Instagram at the beginning and it just was like, it, that's not why people are going there for. So um, Twitter has been consistent, really great. I would say if people are looking for one place to focus on, that would be mine. Like it, it really is a great uh, community of readers um, and you can still share images, but it's not necessarily the main focus. Um, and then again, I uh, Instagram is our next most popular one. Like that's where I was most familiar. I'd be interested to know how people are doing with engagement right now. That's certainly, a moving target. Uh, I know Maria, we were chatting a bit about this last week. So it's like, Instagram was my answer like a month ago, maybe two months ago. Um, Twitter right now. And again, like I'm very new to TikTok, but the support for our TikToks has been really positive for um, something that I was not quite certain of. You and me both, Curtis, on the TikTok friends. Um, Kate, let's hear from you next. Yeah, I think in terms of engagement, it for for Orca, it really kind of depends on what we're posting. Um, certain things like contests are have a lot more engagement on Twitter. That's where we see the most kind of um, replies to our tweets and things like that, the shares. Um, also, if there's any kind of book we're posting about that's more issues based, um, also usually see the most engagement on Twitter. A lot of our authors are very active Twitter users, so we're really able to amplify their voices, but also, you know, have them promote their books. Um, however, on Instagram, I have a very lovely group of um, reviewers that I send books to 
and reach out to every season. And um, they've done amazing things for us in terms of engagement because a lot of times their followers will then come to us. Um, so it's basically just like extending our voice as much as possible. And I will pair it with Curtis was saying, TikTok has been surprising, but good. It, we kind of started out doing it just for fun and um, it, it's growing. Like um, people seem to enjoy our content. I think it's a little bit more playful as well. Like um, it's not as, you know, we do things that are a little bit more silly there. So I think um, people really respond to that because they can kind of get a bit more of a look at who we are um, as people rather than just the books we're publishing. So yeah, but I, I'd say overall, probably Instagram, but again, um, it, it really just depends on what you're posting. It always depends on your post. And just a side note for TikTok, um, I believe that there's a good hunger, I think, for independent Canadian publishers. So like if you can get on there, that would be, I think, really great in sort of helping to showcase um, your books because it's such an easy way to get more noticed, I think, in that algorithm and with those readers. Um, but we do have one big five publisher here, and that is Sam. So let's hear from you. <laughs> Um, it's funny. I feel like I'm sort of the opposite of everyone else where Instagram is really where our audience is. Um, I mean, to be honest, our likes um, have definitely suffered in the last little while, just in terms of, you know, algorithm and the push for more video content and things like that. But in general, I find the Instagram community just responds better to us. Um, on the Tundra side of things, it's because it's picture books. So like Kate and Kaya were saying, you know, having having those beautiful images to share right away automatically gets people's attention. They, they're they just drawn to them in general. Um, so that really helps on the Tundra side. And then on the Penguin Teen side, Penguin Teen Canada side, because it's all YA and because that's where a huge chunk of our readers are, then they're just more likely to interact with us on Instagram. Um, I feel like a bunch of them know that I'm the one who's behind the scenes there. So it does have that personal quality too, where they know that if they're tagging Penguin Teen Canada, they're talking directly to me and I can respond back to them. Um, and the response sort of varies depends uh, depending on, you know, how well I know that person and things like that. Um, with Twitter, when we do those fun threads and things like that, we get great engagement, we get great responses. Um, when we're just sharing reviews and things like that, maybe not as much of a response. So it's been really interesting to try and figure out how we can share those things, how we can keep the authors happy um, without them seeing, you know, only one retweet and three likes. And it just, it feels a little bit worse for them when they're seeing those tiny numbers. Um, I thought it was interesting, Kate, that you said that Twitter giveaways work really well for us, uh, for you at least. Um, I think it's Instagram giveaways that work better for us and we just, our numbers bump so much when we do um, contests and giveaways there. And we are starting out on TikTok um, slowly but surely. So I did start it in May and was just reposting Reels content and it wasn't doing as well. Um, but now that we have someone who can really focus on it and our intern, Stephanie, put together a bunch of really cute videos in the last like two weeks. Um, so we've seen a little bit of a bump in numbers there too. And I think, again, that's where a lot of YA readers live. So we're definitely gonna see a good reaction there once we really get started. It'll definitely be exciting to see the Teen Canada, um, Penguin Canada, at least, um, accounts grow on TikTok. I will definitely make sure I'm following now. Um, all right, my next question here, what strategy has brought great results for you and your team, either in, in engagement, saving time, and resources? Um, who should I start with? Let's start with uh, Curtis. Um, yeah, so we, one of the most recent things that I've uh, asked our team to put a little money into is Hootsuite. Um, still learning some things. Again, Maria taught me something last week, which uh, you should not be posting your Instagram content through Hootsuite. Didn't know that. Uh, not great for the algorithm. Still learning. So um, I'm always like, subscribing to uh, newsletters. There's like a really great marketing and social media newsletter. Um, so I'm still very much in flux of trying to find what stuff works. Again, it's it's just myself here. So it's anytime I'm running into roadblocks, I'm talking with the publisher 
um, about what might change and what might work. So Hootsuite and scheduling has been absolutely so helpful. Myself, just making sure that um, I'm creating basically a little content calendar, which kind of what Kaya was saying, like, okay, I have an event. What three tweets need to go with this event? And then it'll be scheduled like two weeks before, the day before, and then like a post kind of. Um, so basically trying to set up like when um, thing A happens, then it leads to all these other things um, and trying to organize those into buckets. So like, let's use the event as an example. Um, I have an event coming up. I have to work with, we do work with um, a marketing designer so I can ask them to create some assets um, and then scheduling those uh, throughout Hootsuite and not having to rely on myself to remember to go post something. So stuff like that, like when a cover reveal, like we only have about uh, 12 books that we publish throughout the full season. Um, so it actually, it like allows me to be able to do a cover reveal like almost every week for a few weeks. Um, and again, that like anytime, but only on places really where the author is active. If the author isn't active, people don't really engage with it. Um, so I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna put resources towards that. Um, and so, yeah, I think definitely creating a plan has been so helpful to just keep me in line with um, what things need to happen anytime there's like an XYZ kind of uh, a situation. And we have those in publishing, right? Like you have your book goes to pub, your event launch, and then like, let's say the things pop into your schedule, which is like an award announcement that you didn't expect or, um, yeah, that's the one thing I'm going to think of. Um, and yeah, I would say that has been super helpful is scheduling and creating kind of uh, an important day's uh, event calendar throughout the year. Got to make sure we're celebrating, I don't know, like National Cookie Day or something. Um, I just thought of that off the top of my um, head. <laughs> National Gin and Tonic Day is October 19th. We'll be celebrating Fabulous. it with the Five Bottle Bar, Jessica Shat. <laughs> Amazing. I can't wait for that post. <laughs> um, Kaya, let's go to you next. Um, yeah, we definitely have a Google Calendar as well, like Curtis, um, where we just have all these holidays that we are able to employ for marketing purposes um, once in a while. Sometimes there are like, like I don't know, like Asian American Pacific Islander Month, we'll do something for that and stuff like that. Um, so what are some of the strategies that we've used? So we do something called Moomin Monday, which is where we post about Tuba Yansen's Moomin books every Monday. This is a perennial book for us, um, but we notice that there are sale upticks on the Mondays when we do the posts. Um, so it just helps people remember that we are Tuba Yansen's publisher in English and that we have like so many beautiful books by her and so we do that every Monday. Um, another thing that really helps us is tagging products on Instagram but we find that we don't want to do this too much. You don't want to do it like two times in a week. You want to do it like once in a week or else the algorithm starts to not like you. Um, scheduling is a huge thing. We've been talking about that all day at, or all, all session. It's just like tweet deck, hoot suite, meta business suite for Facebook posts and Instagram stories. All these things are immensely helpful for author tours or for anything really. Um, I do a lot of planning as well. For instance, right now we have a book coming out by jean vier Castre and we want to do like um, a whole social media push for her. And so we have it scheduled by the day. What are we going to do in each single day? Who's going to take care of what part of it? Um, so that's sort of the thing. Um, you want to like plan early in advance, schedule what you can. If, if you want to do things spontaneously, that's fine too. Um, things that help us as well are Instagram live events. We do these on pub days um, uh, where our authors come in and show us their studio and talk about their book and show maybe process work. Um, and we also do D, D, D and Q live events, um, which is, it sounds similar, but they're a little bit different. It's more like a conversation between two authors and we put this on Instagram live. So yeah, using um, 
using sort of regular weekly posts for to be answered is something that's really helped us um, using Instagram products, scheduling like crazy, and uh, and employing the live uh, service that Instagram offers. But those have all been things that have helped us out. Yeah, it's always about using all of the tools that any platform has available for you. Um, Sam, let's go to you next. Yeah, like everyone was saying, definitely all about the scheduling, all about having the calendars. I have a super professional like Google Doc where I keep track of certain things um, and can just highlight and move things around as I need to. Uh, we use Sprout for scheduling. It's pretty good. Um, it does like to act a little funny when you try to post videos. So that's probably the most annoying part of it, but in general, it works pretty well. Um, one thing that I started doing last year, I don't know if it necessarily affected, you know, followers and things like that, but I, I felt like it was a nice way to kind of get the community more involved is I do feature Wednesdays. So every Wednesday I repost somebody else's picture, tag them in it, encourage people to follow them as well. Um, and it's just a nice way to share all the beautiful images that we're tagged in, um, kind of spread the love. So we have, you know, bookstagrammers. When I ask them if I can use their pictures, some of them have thousands of followers. And it's like, sure, no problem. I don't mind. And then some of them only have 100 followers and are like, yes, I would love this exposure. Like, even though we don't have a massive following ourselves, it's still getting more eyes on the types of things that they can do. Um, and I think it's just a nice way to get the community involved. It also saves me the trouble of coming up with a post every Wednesday so I can schedule those well in advance. I think now I have like up until the end of November scheduled. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier for me too, but it's just, I like finding different ways that we can get the community involved and make them feel like they're part of something um, and not just following us uh, and you know following some sort of faceless publisher. Nice, and Kate? Um, yeah, like everyone else, I keep a very strict Google Sheet calendar um, for all of our posts, um, working well in advance, um, usually a few months um, in advance, I'll kind of create, I'll just lay out that month. So right now I'm working on uh, November for next month, um, just put in any of those special holidays, um, like National Cookie Day, um, or anything of note, uh, any publication days, any events like that, just so that I can make sure that I don't miss anything and that I'm working well in advance to make sure I'm getting those posts up. As I mentioned, Canva has been a humongous time saver for us because instead of submitting a request to a designer to create something for social media, I can do it or have someone else on the team do it. Um, I also use, this is kind of just like a very tiny one, but also really helps with that kind of editing aspect is I use Grammarly as a Chrome extension on my computer, which uh, checks the grammar of your posts. So don't have time to get everything edited before I send it out. Um, so this just lets me, it, it almost has like a set second set of like robot eyes <laughs> on everything I'm posting. So it will catch any of my spelling errors, uh, which is very, very useful and really just cuts out that need for someone else to be looking at it. That being said, um, the amount of times I've posted something and then immediately noticed an error is immense. <laughs> so uh, let's just say thank goodness for the Facebook editing tool. Um, and I wish that Twitter had it because it does not and it is so frustrating. Um, but it happens. <laughs> so um, but I think if people catch it too, they also, you know, we're just people and we all make mistakes too. So but that's one way to try to stop it. It's Grammarly. So yeah. that is a fantastic tip as a chronic um misspeller because I'm so used to my phone correcting everything that I spell but yeah it's hard out here sometimes um so we have a ton of audience questions so I'd like to get through as many as possible um the first one here uh, do you find that scheduling your posts through third-party platforms so like Hootsuite and Meta affects your engagement um feel free to take the floor anybody Yeah, the posts scheduled through HitSuite have fewer likes than posts that are scheduled naturally. I don't know how, perhaps Curtis and Maria would have more to say about this. But yeah, no, it just um, it just has less, less engagement in general. But it really helps if you have to get something out and you don't want to have to remember it on the day. At least it's out there. At least people will see it, you know. So. TweetDeck, Twitter, that's all the same for me. I feel like that gets the same engagement. It's just HitSuite is a little weird. Um, Curtis, care to chime in or anyone else? 
Yeah, we just started with Hootsuite. So I'm still figuring out like how, what the differences are. Um, but yeah, I'll see about video very soon because I'm no longer posting videos through Hootsuite. That's definitely an engagement killer. So I've learned. Um, let me see if there's no other comments on that. Um, I can go to the next question here. Um, what accessibility needs do you consider when running social media campaigns and newsletters? Um, Sam, I saw you nodding. So would you care to chime in? <laughs> yeah, um, that's something that I've been thinking about a lot, especially in the last couple of years, because we're so online, um, you know, during the pandemic, everything had to be online. Uh, so one thing that I was constantly pushing for is captions um, on any sort of video. I personally don't watch videos unless there's captions just because I never have my volume on. So I mean, in terms of just people being able to to check it out without turning their volume on or people who genuinely need um, subtitles is really helpful. Uh, for the last at least year, if not two years, I've been including image descriptions on Instagram as well um, and trying to remember to do them on Twitter. Um, I usually catch it, but sometimes I'll forget and, and realize after I've posted something. Um, with Instagram, I was doing them just as part of the caption as well, uh, but I know there's now uh, like an actual alt text box. Um, so I'm slowly figuring out how to just update those um, every day because uh, I don't think I can schedule those in when I use Sprout, unless I can. I don't know. I've never actually tried it. So maybe I'll maybe I'll fool around with it later and see if that happens. Um, but yeah, accessibility to me just makes a lot of sense. I don't want anyone to feel excluded. Um, and because I'm in very much in the YA space uh, where these conversations happen a lot, um, then I'm constantly, you know, following different accounts or just threads that come across um, my timeline just to see what else we can do to make things easier for people and more accessible and inclusive. Yeah, those are all great practices to start um, putting in your posts. Kate, do you have any comments or anybody else? Um, just to mention that we do the same um, with the 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 alternative text on our Instagram posts as well. Um, I get, I try to update them daily as well. I also haven't figured out a way to schedule it. Um, I also just try to be really careful on any YouTube videos we put up. Um, YouTube will um, create captions for you, which is extremely helpful on one hand. However, they're usually really bad. Um, so for any video we post, I go in and make sure that everything is reading properly and doesn't have any um, really terrible spelling mistakes, um, just to make sure that everything's coming across really clearly. Yeah, those YouTube captions can be such a nightmare sometimes, <laughs> especially with punctuation. Um, another question we have here is, what do you do for mental health to get a break from the grind? So does it wear on you to be like always on for replies and monitoring? Um, Curtis, do you want to start? Sure. Um, yeah, I think that's a really great question. Um, and I think timely, like I definitely fall time gets really busy in publishing. Um, and if you <laughs> go to our social media right now, there's not as many posts as I would normally like. Um, but again, we have a really small uh, team and I have a very direct relationship with the publisher. So um, we understand that uh, we can try and do as much as we can, but we have limited resources and social media can really feel like a slog sometimes, especially right now. Um, I'm really trying to engage the community through conversation, which is just can eat up a lot of energy, trying to remember who everyone is while also caring for authors. Um, so yeah, it, it can be a lot. And I think just having um, like an open and honest relationship with your manager or the authors as well, like understand, like I have really great relationship with my authors and whenever I'm maybe slower to respond, it's never, where are you? It's more like, are you okay? So it's like being able to be open and honest and recognize that social media is a tool for us to sell the books. There are many other ways to sell books, 
Um, so it's just one way to reach an audience and it doesn't necessarily have to be the only way, I think. Such sage advice, Curtis. We love it. <laughs> um, does anybody else want to chime in about uh, mental health and uh, taking a break? Go ahead, Kate. I would just mention that having a team where you are free to vent a little bit um, can be really helpful. As everybody who is a social media user knows, there are some really terrible things that pop up, um, whether just in general or even occasionally in direct response to some of your books. Um, Orca publishes some really great books about things like abortion. Um, and we get some interesting comments. Um, so being able to vent my frustrations um, with my team is really, really helpful. And to know that I have their, su or their support and that they've got my back um, is really helpful. Also make good use of that delete comment and ban button when you need to, um, it feels good. <laughs> so instead of re responding, I just delete and report and move on with my day if it's something that I find is uh, in violation of our guidelines. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely the report button is very um, empowering. I'm sorry about my dog, Charlie. <laughs> um, I think we have time for one more question. Um, I think this is more directed to Sam. Um, how much have you noticed the demand from Instagram for more video content has impacted your post reach and how you approach Instagram as a platform now? So are you spending more time on it creating videos or moving away from it towards a different platform or even your new um, social media coordinator? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I did start posting reels um, a little bit more this year. Uh, we had a couple go up last year and they did pretty well. Um, and then it was just too busy. Uh, I didn't really have time to do any sort of content creating, um, especially with video because it takes so long. Um, it's been really interesting to see the reaction to our reels and to our TikToks. Um, I feel like we don't get as big a jump in numbers or in an engagement as I sort of expected. So I think it's still because we're playing around with it. They're not as regular. Uh, the first few were, you know, literally me like unpacking boxes and stuff like that. So it wasn't super engaging content, but it was still some sort of video. Um, so our likes on Instagram have gone down. It's kind of depends on the book. We have certain books that will perform well, no matter what we do, whether it's a video or just a picture or whatever, um, people will still respond to it and will still interact with it. Um, but yeah, it's been, a, it's been very interesting to try and see what actually gets more of a reaction. Um, I know that doesn't really answer the question that well, but it's still very much a work in progress and just experimenting with different video styles and, and things like that. Yeah, I think find or being able to find your 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 video voice or something like that will definitely help with engagement down the road because you know I think Instagram like yeah reels were really great to post when they first came out but now it's really just hit and miss both for like my own account and also for Dundurn so it just depends on the day I guess. Um, does anybody else kind of want to put in any last final thoughts about like video content or anything before we wrap this up? Nope, no last words, all right. So in that sense, um, thank you so much to uh, Kaya, Kate, Sam and Curtis for joining us today. I think we had such an amazing chat and I hope everybody watching has some good sense about social media coming up for your own content because you all have amazing books. And lastly, BookNet Canada would like to thank the Department of Canadian Heritage for their support through the Canada Book Fund. Um, and thank you all for attending. I hope you had a great afternoon and yeah, have a good afternoon. Thank you so much, everybody.